I don't like being told what to do, man. Uh, we need more energy. Fuck you and your energy. Ah, batong. Magaiba. Who's going to watch your dead face? Who's going to watch your dead face? That is pathetic. That's a pathetic reason, bruh. No, 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 no. No, no. sometimes you just tired. Ah, yeah. Then you can't. Tired. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Henda, what do you mean? It's been a long time coming. <laughs> and she's finally here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mutsidi Z. Oh. oh, you love me. Oh, do you know? Do you know how many people oh, have been gosh. asking me to get you since uh, the World Cup, man? Why? Hey, hey! I don't know. People want to hear your story. Talk to me. But before we talk about your story, yes, this is personal. This has got nothing to do with the podcast. I just, I've always wanted to ask you this, but I just haven't. Why did you and Lynn never get together? Hi, man. <laughs> Why are we personal in the in the opening sequence? <laughs> You know, because straight he liked the you. trailer. I think everybody knew he liked you. And I don't know if Len, you liked him Len, as well. why did we not get together? <laughs> Len, these are questions that need answers. Because remember... Answer when, the question, Len. Remember when you guys stayed in Melville together? You were always by his place, remember? Yeah, but it's because we lived in the same complex. Yeah. Um, He was the guy with the Xbox and the... PS and the DSTV, so we'd all flock, but we'd all flock there. Remember what it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. on the on the black and red couches, yeah. and we'd just chill there watching footy, watching whatever was on, whatever sport was on. Shit, that's yeah, where the love for sports started. Actually, no, khale, khale, mm. that was a long time ago. But I, I, that's I think what made our friendship so much closer. Yeah, yeah. So no, so Lenny. your friends owned him. Yeah, <laughs> you're such a hater. <laughs> Let Len and I be friends. What is your problem? <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, tell me about the World Cup, man. How did it change your life, bro? Yo, the World Cup was Cause incredible. Because you've been at that at Supersport for a minute, you know? Mm, mm. I've been there since 2011, since wow. the Lady Raga um, presenter search. It's odd. I came third in that search. Mm. So there was really nothing in it for a person that finished third, right? Yeah. Uh, then I got a call from one of the producers, Erin Ferreira. And she was like, yo, I've, um, I saw your tapes. I'd like to, you know, do a screen test with you for one of our shows for the 2011 Rugby World Cup. That's what was coming up, the one in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll come through. We did a screen test. You see, it's not an audition anymore. She's like, I want a screen test because mm-hmm. I want you. Yeah. Um, and we ended up doing a show called uh, Super Sport Super Fan with Derek Alberts. I did the show with him. And from then on, it's just... Onwards and upwards, onwards and upwards. And yeah, the, the Rugby World Cup 2019 was definitely the crescendo. Yeah. Anchoring a Rugby World Cup match in yeah. GA is, is just, you got to be world class, yeah. you know, world class panel, world class team behind the scenes as well. So it was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And then the final and you're like, hey man, yeah. you know, yeah. all the work is paying off. So yeah, I was really, really, really excited about that. Does the industry see you in a different light now since, since that uh, the World Cup? I think, I, think, I think people that have been paying attention to my career for a while already knew. You know, I think what a World Cup does is just put you on a global stage. Mm. It, it puts you... It, it, there's more reach there's a bigger reach more people are watching you know it's not like just super rugby or just curry cup or um just the british and irish lions tour to new zealand which i did in 2017 now it's like the world cup and everybody tunes in even people that don't usually watch the sport uh so i think the reach got a lot bigger but those who know always knew mm. and they probably said they're like uh, yeah. this is where she's gonna end up yeah, yeah. Are you getting industry people on some like, hey friend, people that never <laughs> spoke to you? Why are you so spicy? <laughs> but hey friend, <laughs> sports journals, we love each other. We really, really do. We got to look out for each other, man. Um, yeah. It's the reach that's bigger, mm. you know, and it's, and it's lovely when it's even uh, journals that you don't usually see because they don't do the same sport as you. No, I'm saying not even not journals, move in bro. the same circle, just normal people. Yeah, like celebrities. Oh, I mean, they will. They will because because there's some there's something that they see in you that is to be celebrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know. So so no, I have I have no qualms with that. I know who my people are. Mm. I know who who's in my circle, um, and I appreciate that they see uh, quality work and celebrate it. Yeah, yeah. How, how monumental was that um, 
that the, 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 the World Cup that you did uh, for not just uh, black people, but females as well in broadcasting? I, I think it, it just cemented what we've, we've always known, that we can do the job. Yeah, I'm trying to sound serious. Yeah. <laughs> you, you dropped the bass. <laughs> Please be serious. Eh? Respect my podcast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it just it it confirmed what we already knew, you know, mm. and and we've had so many women in the space that have been shining for years. Like who? Carol is one. Carol Shabalala. Um, there is Cass Naidu in okay. cricket. Okay. There is Mpoma Boy. Mm. There is Lebu Mutsuedi. There's Tato Muyeng, who mm. we worked with at YFM. Mm. World class, mm. you know, uh, uh, women that you can put in front of camera. Not give them very much, but because they're astute broadcasters, they will they will make magic. Mm. And where I work, I'm lucky that there are those caliber of women behind the scenes as well. So in the director's chair and no not um PA Ongeziwe Zondani, producer Ongi as well. Um we have Pindile Shabalala, we have uh Rhea, we have so many women that are also stepping it up, not just in front of camera but behind the scenes as well. Both in technical as well as in running the show, we have great uh, production managers at Supersport International. Like, so so the, you can't be mediocre. Yeah, you 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 mm. can't you can't be lackluster in mm. what you do. You always have to put your best foot forward because everyone around you is. Yeah. And and when everybody around you is being excellent, the non-excellent ones you can mm. spot very quickly. Which ones are those? They are the ones that. Um, Probably aren't doing the gig for the right reasons. Uh, they're the ones who, um, the why isn't solidified just yet, you know, because it can't. You can't just want to do this for money. Yeah. You can't want to do it just for for fame or whatever. There's but just the got to be. Though. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm try. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there <laughs> You know There's still so much more to be accomplished um, But it's got to there, There's got to be some It's almost something intangible That that gets you out of bed every single mm. day That keeps you going when the days are dark Or, or when they're long and tough and, and World Cups are like that They're long tough days So um, your love for what you do Becomes so much more important Than uh, just the frivolous I, 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 I'll be honest with you. When I heard you um, are going to Super Sport, I was shocked. Because mm. uh, when we started working together, we were recording there. Yeah, we are, ne? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when when I first met you, uh, let me tell you about when I met you at Y. Uh, I think you were reading sports. Was it sports? No, news, news, mm. news. And I heard you read news for the first time. I don't know if it was on my show, whose show it was. And I was like, wow. This 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 lady or this girl sounds amazing, cause like I envy your the way you speak, the way you articulate. You know, <laughs> has anyone ever told you that? Yeah, I get that a lot. Eh? Yeah, you speak good English, not like the other blacks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which makes this so messy. It's like, is that a compliment? <laughs> Am I sure? I, I I don't even know where it comes from. I honestly don't. But what I used to always hear is people were always surprised by how young I was. Yeah. Yes, because yes. when you listen, it doesn't sound like a very yes, young person. Yes. Then they meet me like, you yes. was easy for real. Yeah. So I think I, 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 I don't know. I kid you not. Every time I heard your bulletin, uh, because as a broadcaster, you got to announce it really well. Mm. You know, it's mm. one of the things that you have to work on. And when I heard you, I'm like, shit, I wish I could announce. I mean, announce it like, like, like City, the way she speaks. I don't know. I don't the know. words I don't know just roll. What it. Mm. Maybe it's high school. Like I used to do like... I loved speeches, orals. Oh, you know, I mean, they they make you anxious, but I wasn't afraid to do them. I wasn't Not afraid oral to sex, speak. Just orals. In, speaking in front of the class. <laughs> that is the definition of what I'm talking about. I don't know where your mind is at. <laughs> just making know, sure. Debating. Um, so I guess that where it, that's where it comes from. Oh. But I, the 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 skill to sound a particular way, probably from listening to other. Um, News readers, mm. especially on on TV, I used to love Mahendra mm. Ragnar mm. on SABC. Have a tantalizing Tuesday. Hey, I'm like, yay, 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 yay! What? Where's my horn? Where's my horn? That's a really good question. I don't know where where I could possibly have what kind honed of, it. What kind of a um, student were you in high school? Ah, brilliant. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. are overachiever. Ne? One way. Hmm. Ah, the day I made it into top 10, I didn't even celebrate it. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this thing was coming. You one know? of those kids that made it in the newspapers. <laughs> was I in the paper? I think once. Yeah. I think once. Um, like from a trick. You probably with our debate team. Yes, I was in the paper with four stars, four distinctions. Yes. Look at you. I've always known you were smart. No, I was, an, I was a complete overachiever. I think where things <laughs> unraveled was varsity. Mm. But that was a time issue. That wasn't a, um, a smart issue. And also, I think I realized early, once I started working at Y, I realized like, I, I don't think I want to be an accountant. Oh, oh, you wanted to? Yes. Yeah, remember. CA, I'm no. studying accounting. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. Ah, second year, I plummeted, bro. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Shoot your flames. <laughs> Yo. Listen. Like, I cruised through first year. Yeah. First year was nice. Yeah. It was good times, you know. You're not at YFM Getting yet. 70s and 80s. No, not okay. at Y yet. Okay. And, and, and with, with 70% effort, mm. I was getting my A's and B's. Mm. Why? When I started, this was, I started in April 2008. Yeah. Aye, bruh. And I was reading news on weekends. And then I don't know, like, I guess varsity kind of sucked me in. But there was also just a lot going on. It's also that trying to balance work with school and life and friendships and relationships and so family. It sounds like growing up, right, you had this order, you know, there was a structure, mm. there was a purpose, right? Mm. Now you get to why, which fucks you up. <laughs> say that I think I think I think I needed I needed that mm -hmm. I needed I needed to realize that it is okay to have a little chaos mm. and, and to even fail because that year was the first time that I failed I mean oh. at the end of the year I failed four modules and I'm <laughs> I lost my my uh, my bursary. Let's call it a scholarship, mm. but they were just paying for my tuition and my books, and I lost that working mm. for Y. And remember, I started on weekend and then moved to midday around Septemberish. So then already it's like I'm at work eight to five, and then when do you go to class? When do you when do you study? I wasn't, I had not perfected my time management at that point. So yo, that was the year, uh, the best and worst year of my life. But it, it was it was important because I learned that even I am not immune to failure mm. and that I can't hold myself to a standard of if I do great at everything, then I am great. Mm. You know, it, I, I had to, I had to identify myself outside of my victories that I had at the time, mm. you know, and just be okay with the person that I was on the inside. And that balance it was madness. I, I didn't I didn't get it right. Not then. So so take me back to that time, actually. That's very profound what you're saying, because as someone who's used to success and achieving mm. all this time, when you're faced with failure, I mean, I'm faced with failure all the time, so I'm immune to it now. <laughs> <laughs> For you, how do you handle it? Because you don't know what to do. I don't think, uh, what, what, what can you do? Yeah. You know? It do you go home and cry? I do. I did. I did. I remember first year, first semester, I did, I didn't do well in accounting. And I was just like, Njani, bro. Like, I used to waltz through this class. Yeah. What is going on? And I remember sitting across from my lecturer and she was like, I don't, I don't think you'll, you're, you'll be able to be a CA. I Whoa. think you're going to have to take the CTA route. And, and all I was hearing was, you failed, you mm. failed. That's, that's how it translated in my mind. And I was just like, yo, I'm a failure. I was like dead pro. I was sad. I was, mm. you know, crying all the time. I think the worst was the second semester where I felt like I was getting it right. Yes, maybe I'm on a different stream, mm. but at least I'm doing well. Mm. And now um, work is now getting very, very busy. I don't have time for school. And then I fail four modules. Now I have to go tell my parents. Mm. Okay, no, no, next year I get it paid. Mm. You know, and they... They're just like, how sway when? Yeah, you know. Um, so they were, they were, they were <laughs> stressed. They were, they were stressed. But I'm glad that they didn't put me in a hole about it mm. because they knew they've always known I had a plan. Yeah. They just didn't understand where radio fits into this plan because now it's like, but you focusing on all, all your time on radio, radio this, radio that. Where is school fitting in? Yeah. And that's what I needed to learn the the balance. When does the radio bug bite you? Yo, we were young, man. I used to like listen to why, you know, when we were kids, like ten, eleven. Ritlina got through on a Saturday, open all the doors, like mm. we were in the no corner house. Naked cleaner, babes. <laughs> no, naked cleaner. Give me a fast babes. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. have you seen my knees? Okay, they're much better now. And literally, na hamu hona You know, yeah. you know um, li- used to live on the corner house, Ramkunubi East, and we'd like speakers are uh, blaring, wires on, Ashifa Shaba in the morning. Ooh. I mean, ngetuala Ashifa Shaba, and we'd start sitting room cleaner cleaner koropa koropa mm. and you know in your whole house is tiles bro. Yeah. you will be on your knees the whole day mm. so that's where I really got into it you know the the Dre on Fire mm. Bridget you know mm. um, like that whole class generation whole, mm. um, Rude Boy Paul Unati listening to them on radio was mm. just fire that but at, at, at this time radio. you're not thinking sports ne? no I'm not mm. sport, sport was kind of like just a part, an everyday part of my life. Um, my dad was a, a football man. Always had been. Always loved football. You got to watch a game yeah, with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he loved his footy. Um, and then everything else. I mean, netball. I played in primary school. Played hockey in high school. Uh, um, learned about cricket in primary school. The boys sat me down one day. Taught me this is how it works. This is an over. This is the bowler, the batsman. Basically giving me the, the, the pointers And then I started watching it at home And I was like Oh okay This yeah. is fun I can watch this So it, 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 it had always been A part of my life But then If you had told me I would be a sports presenter I would have been like yeah. You are joking Yeah I exactly. want to be an accountant And make money <laughs> Yes Because like I said man At Y We never thought You were going to become A sports pre- I just knew You were going to be good At whatever you do But remember how Our newsroom used to be Like a sporty newsroom mm. Like we always used to banter You'd walk in there And someone's crying about Hey Asma Yeah and Everyone knew to yeah, support yeah, Arsenal yeah. in that newsroom I don't know why um, There was Sam Supported Man United Everybody had a team Everyone supporting their team So you walk in And it's just Eh hey, Wara wara You owe me this Eh hey, your team Eh hey, your coach hey, your... So so we were always Just like a sporting newsroom So when Tato left To 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 join Super Sport In 2011 I was like Ah oh, man guys mm. I can rock this thing yeah, yeah. Take over sports Yeah and our editor at the time, Zwila Machov, was like, okay, cool, it's yours. Yeah. So when the Lady Raga audition came about, it was like a day, like, nah, just go for it. Yeah, go, yeah, see, yeah. go see, you can speak, you're a broadcaster, mm. you'll, you'll learn everything else. And I went to an Afrikaans high school, so it's not like it's brand new to me. It's just that then I just thought, why would anyone call this chaos a sport? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, because that's what it looked like. It looked like chaos. Yeah. Um, but I grew to love it. Wow. Which I do now, yeah. So, so... Um, I want you to take everybody back to why. Because mm. I think people from the outside, it might seem like, you know, we knew what we were doing. But we were young, <laughs> we were bro. Very young. We were young. Very young. And at why, it was like the three in the deep end. You either sink or swim. Was mm. it like that in the newsroom? Oh, as well? yes. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, 08, I joined. I was 19 years old. Um, I had been working at UJFM doing a reading news on the breakfast show. And you walk in and it's a proper newsroom. It's it's reporters and anchors and it's busy. And I'm an accounting student. Yeah. Like, what is happening? <laughs> what 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 is this program? What is newsroom? Yeah. What like what, cutting sound? Who? T- how do I do that? Is it like, you know? So so much confusion. But I think it's like you say. Like when you have your mindset on. Doing well at something mm. You're just gonna apply yourself I remember my was saying to me Like an accounting student You're like Why? Yeah. I'm like nah You know what I need to make money I need to relieve my parents I mm. need to remove myself From their budget mm. And this came about Someone told me about it So I thought Let me just take a shot yeah. You know I knew that I sounded good yeah. But I also knew That I needed to work At the 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 journal side mm. you know i needed to learn how to write i needed to to learn how to write well and to write for radio which is very different to writing mm. from for print um general knowledge had to be even bigger and better exponential even you know because at why we we covered everything mm. so so that's where i think the the growing really happened and for most of us well for me let me speak for myself i was just like every day coming in and be like what am i doing <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? I was up to like six cups of coffee in the morning. Do you remember how we used to just devour e coffee? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, by half past nine, I'm like six cups in and I'm just like, I, I need to go to campus. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, but we made it work. We were hungry. We wanted, mm. we wanted to do well. We wanted to be great. We wanted to sound great. We wanted a newsroom that was thriving and credible and... And brilliant, mm. you know, because by the time we moved to Hyde Park, we were like, what, 21, 22 year olds running the newsroom. Mm. You could leave us alone and we would still churn out brilliant bulletins every mm. hour. 
Damn, that's crazy, man. Do you remember meeting like any of the radio personalities at the time who like got you starstruck? Like, wow. Some. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to be starstruck though. Yeah. yeah. I try to act like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Avenue. Yeah, don't be all. Know. Yeah. But like we all <laughs> do a tag in and you're like, yeah, I got to just see what's here. Who was and it? all was the it celebrities Spoo? that were waltz in and out. Spoo, it's weird because I'd been hearing Spoo since grade seven, grade yeah. six, grade seven. Spoo, wonder why yeah, yeah. I was like, this is Spoo. Oh, this, this guy's cool. This yeah. guy's a guy, man. Yeah, yeah, Come on, yeah. you know. Um, but like the Amons of the world. I got to work Amon. with Amon. I got to work with Tato from Tato and Tato. Um, you know, meeting the likes of Fresh. Who, and most of them I didn't meet even at Y. Mm. Met them as as we moved along in, in our industry, careers. Yeah. yeah. I even oh, tried you, man, because I remember when I was just nah, started. I was very you're strict. like, hey, friend, get ah, off. I friend was zone. very, very strict. I was very, very strict. But I've always been that kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've always been that kid. I had to be strict. But I also, like, I think I had my eye on the prize. So I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried not to let too many things distract me. Yeah. And it's weird. In retrospect, I realized, like, just how much uh, celebrity and influence was around us. Mm, I'm, I'm sometimes mm, surprised that yeah. we didn't fall off the wagon. Yeah, hey? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we. We are focused. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then now, when we leave Y, where do we go? So I left Y um, late 2011 after joining Super Sport. So this was just to do Super Sport, Super Fan. And then I had been pestering um, one of the ladies at Metro. Okay. To try and join Metro <laughs> FM. Mm. And eventually she calls. She's like, yo, spot is open on the weekend. Can you nah. come in and read for me? I'm like, what? Type my resignation, same time. <laughs> Yes, girl. I'll be there Friday for orientation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Karen could believe it. She's probably like, hey, this girl is very controversial. No, yeah. I was waiting for that call. Mm. But I've been pestering her for months. Like, I'd send her um, sound bites of my bulletins, how I used to write, and all of that. I've and been pestering nice. Tony for four years now. No, get in there, bro. Hey, Eventually, I've it will pop. Up. No, it will happen. Mm. Don't 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 get tired of persevering. <laughs> Just when you th- you're close, that's when you could like ah, you're not hearing me. No, continue there. Yeah. So so um, I read news on the weekends. Yeah. You know, for the likes of Adele, Adele was still on air at the mm. time. Uh, and then um, when you get there, are you thinking I've made it? No, you're not. It's weekend, Chief. Come on. Yeah. No, no. And and you know what's weird? Like because then I was. I considered myself like, okay, now I'm a sports person. Oh, okay. I so figured I need to move. Winning would be moving out of news. Mm. So that's what I was trying to... Not CD from news, CD sports. Yes. Got you. So that's what I was trying to work on. And I think it was the next year, um, next year or the year after. It's, I beg your pardon. Excuse me. Mm. I beg your pardon. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, where I joined Amon and Tato and Khobedi. Mm. On 12 to 3. Khobedi. Khobedi yes, during the week. Khobedi do log when now. Yes. I joined their team doing sports. Mm. That's when I was like, yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And how was that like? Because YFM and Metro, those are two different animals. Definitely. Definitely. Um, what I liked about... Amon and Tato and Khobedi is that they basically took me under their wing. Uh-huh. You know, I had to learn to do radio at their pace. I had to learn to do radio according to Metro. And it was fun. And they also allowed me the space to grow in this sporting space, to be a sports anchor on the show. So with banter about uh, what happened over the weekend, that kind of thing, they gave me my space to to grow yeah. and to be a good anchor. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, it was, there, there was no dictatorship on that show. Yeah. It was really a free flowing show. Yeah. You know, like with, um, I don't know if you ever heard our throwback Fridays. I'd be the one standing up and jamming. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, how old are you? And, <laughs> you know, um, jamming to all that old school white door and house music. And, yeah. yo, know, that, that, that was the best. Time. I don't know. I remember listening yeah. to that show. I'm like, oh, TD's the secret gone. ingredient. Hey, TD's oh, gone. Get a match from Super Sport. Yo. <laughs> Tuzim Ned. Ah, but then I was still paying my dues, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We yeah. still are. Yeah. So, um, um, you know, like with It, it Girls, right? Mm. When there's an endorsement out, mm. you know, they all want it. And then there's a bit of beef that can stem from that. Like if some other It Girl gets it and you don't. Yeah. Is, there like, is it like that with female sports? Like if you get the Metro gig, is Tatum Wing saying like, oh shit, that should have no. been mine. I think, the, I think we're still... 
there's a lot of us, but I think the space for us is still very small. Mm. So like every time someone wins, you feel like you've won as well. It's oh. like, okay, she's opened the door. Yeah. So that means if she can make it in that space, there's room for me or there's room for me to also be in that space. Yeah. So like every single victory for a, a, a woman in sport, especially in broadcasting, mm. is a victory for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you can see yourself in that person. Yeah. Yeah. And then after Metro, do you go to Massive Metro now? Yeah. So after Metro, I left Metro March 2015. And the reason I left is because I had to... I'd been traveling a lot with Supersport. I was doing the Varsity Cup and Varsity Sport. So that's the rugby, the netball, the football, the hockey, uh, beach volleyball. I was like an all-rounder mm. by that time. And it's a lot of travel that's involved. So I was spending a lot of time away from the show. Mm. So maybe I'd be there like four times a week or three times a week. And I understood Tony's plight in continuity, mm. you know. So I had to sit there and be like, okay, you got to... you you." You've got to pick one because you've got to put 100% into something, something, you know. And by that time, I had been in radio for seven years. Mm. And I thought, let me put all my energy in television. Wow. Let me see if this will not work. I hate TV so much. So I took a chance. Really. What? I took a chance. I took a chance. And I also think because I had div diversified myself so much, with, with my goal on ending up just doing rugby, I had... A space mm. that couldn't quite be filled by anybody else, mm. you know. Yeah, so I could take that that chance. Mm. Look, like it it hurt me financially for a while, mm. for a long while. Mm. But I figured, let me do it. Let me take a chance. I don't like being told what to do, man. Uh, we need more energy. Fuck you and your energy. Ah, but don't. Who's gonna watch your dead face? Who's gonna watch your? Dead face? <laughs> That is pathetic. That's a pathetic reason, bruh. No, 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 no. no. no sometimes you're just tired. Ah, you're then just you can't tired. Yeah. Because remember, people, people are tuning in to be entertained. No, yeah, no matter yeah, what you're doing. Even yeah. when you're talking about the serious stuff, there's a way to do it <laughs> that doesn't make it like watching beige paint dry. Mm, mm. Nobody switches on their TV for that. Yeah. And you have the energy. What's your problem? I'm just saying, it takes me back to, maybe it's because I was a kid and I didn't understand what was happening. You don't like time. authority. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> you don't like authority. Uh, you, you're too old to be thinking like this, my guy. I'm, um, you talked about finance. Yes, yes. You've been broke, bro. Bruh, I moved back home, bruh. You're kidding. I had to move back home. Like, there was a time I had to move back home. Pack my bags and move back home. And you like, TD, TD, TD. Dude, I'm on Super Sport International <laughs> and I moved back home. <laughs> ah, <laughs> this is not funny, bruh. <laughs> yeah. And this was after my decision to take a shot. I'm like, I'm going to yeah. take a shot. We're going to do this. Mm. You know, um, so the 2015 Rugby World Cup happens and I was doing a weekend show Um also like a super sport, super fan kind of show. So it was for the fans, mm -hmm. a show that was for the fans. And, and I had gone into that tournament thinking that I would be doing so much more. So I already knew that my pocket is going to be very thin after mm -hmm. this, uh, this competition. But once that finished, there was varsity cup had wrapped, rugby world cup had wrapped. So there was no real work for like November, December, oh. January, February, maybe a little bit into March. So I found myself having to live off of the money that I've saved. You like it. Then you, then I started cashing out investments. I mean, it's real. You got For a freelancer. You save. I do. <laughs> I do. You have to. As a freelancer, you have, you have no choice. But I had never had quiet time like that because I always had radio. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And... Hey, it was it was tough times because even even though I was working, I think I did a, a bit of blitz at the time as well, but mm. it was just not enough to sustain me. And I remember um, I used to live with uh, my housemates Nigi Wemzaganda, and our the owner of the flat where we were staying decided he's going to sell. So the new owners are obviously like, "Ah, if we want to move in, mm. so now we've got to move out." I had just also bought my flat here in Randburg, yeah. and now it's like, "Will I be able to afford it? Yeah. Can I live here by myself?" So I just decided, you know what, let me go home. Mm. Let me go home for a little while, mm. get my money right, mm. and then I can always move back to my place. Let me rent it out in the meantime. And I remember I was home for like, like a, a month, six <laughs> weeks. I had not even unpacked my bag. 
Yeah. I couldn't. I was like, no, we <laughs> moved back home. <laughs> yeah. Shoot, no, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be out just now. Don't worry, I'm sorting myself out. And I remember mm. my mom walked into my room the one time and she's like, like, it's really okay. Mm. This is your home. You can stay here if you need to be here. Yeah. You know, and take the time that you need to sort yourself out. Uh, I ended up being home for, this is now 2016. So I, I was back home um, beginning of February. And I think I only moved back to my place end of October 2017. So I was home for like a year and a half. Mm. But I see now why that time was so important for me to be there. I was needed at home. Mm. You know, I couldn't be anywhere else. So mm. so in retrospect, it is another failure that mm. was for my good. Weren't you embarrassed? Like, you know, I'm Tiggy, I'm, I'm on Mentor, I'm on Don't Super Bowl. time. Mm. We're taking taxis There's and stuff. No. There's no time. No, I had my car. Oh, at least. I was I was driving the mini one. Hey, hey now. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, can I afford it this month? <laughs> can I afford it next month? Yeah. You know? Yeah, so... And it's so strange how you sit at home and you're like, I have made some pretty stupid decisions with my money, mm. you know? Or, or you start to question maybe... Your, your your passion and the passion that you have for the work that you do you start to wonder am I in the right place am I doing the right thing mm. you know am I honoring God with my talent Sh- is this the space where I need to be working should I go get a job because I remember even thinking maybe I should go back into accounting wow. you know I have my degree let me mm. maybe uh, enroll for honors let me go work but but I just knew deep down inside I would not enjoy that, yeah. you know. So it was it was never really going to be an option for me. I had to get stuck in, um, get my money right, and work. 